Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless with the chaos and uncertainty growing around the world almost daily more people than ever should be preparing for the event that will bring about the climax to human history and the restoration of all things in other words a new heaven and a new earth the second coming of christ jesus rebuked the pharisees for not recognizing the signs of his first coming as we read in matthew 16 1 through 3 then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. The religious leaders of Jesus' day had full knowledge of the prophecies of the Messiah. Yet these religious leaders ignored the signs and still rejected him. If the religious leaders of Jesus' day missed the signs of Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to pay close attention to the signs of Jesus' second coming? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. The breaking news overnight, that massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria. The death toll is rising after the magnitude 7.8 quake level buildings across that region. Our foreign correspondent, James Longman, has the latest. Good morning, James. Yeah, good morning, Robin. This is the worst possible scenario. This was a catastrophically strong earthquake. It hit just below the surface. Uh, it hit overnight, which means people just did not have the warning they needed. And many of the buildings in this part of the world are not strong enough to cope. And thousands of people who live in southern Turkey and in northern Syria are Syrian refugees. They've already been made homeless by war. Overnight, a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Turkey and Syria. Terrifying video shows the moment a building starts to collapse. People start running for their lives and then nothing but dust and debris. In Syria, this dramatic moment captured of a toddler being pulled from the wreckage. Survivors can be heard wailing as they desperately search for their loved ones. Many of the dead are Syrian refugees already made homeless by war. In the night sky, arching wires could be seen on top of one building, lighting up the Turkish skyline. As the sun rose, the sheer scope of the devastation has become visible. Reports say more than 100 buildings came down in Turkey. Here's what's left of this hotel. Tremors could be felt in at least nine cities across the country. As the quake began, you can see this chandelier and lights start to tremble. The epicenter of the quake in the Turkish city of Kahraman Maras, near the border with Syria. And this morning, the injured and dead are being loaded into ambulances in Syria. The civil defense says hundreds of people are injured and trapped. Reports say the quake was felt more than 600 miles away in Beirut, Jerusalem and Cairo. And there are more aftershocks and tremors being felt, including a 7.5 magnitude in southern Turkey. President Erdogan has said 45 countries, including the United States, have offered their help. It's going to be so much more difficult to get that help into Syria. For those of us who have reported extensively on the Syrian war and from eastern Turkey, I can tell you there are few places on earth that are home to as many millions of people already traumatized and displaced by war than there. And now this massive disaster, making matters even worse. The earthquake comes as the Middle East is experiencing a bitterly cold snowstorm that is expected to last all week. They are left in the cold. 
These displaced families in northern Syria are facing a new ordeal brought on by a severe snowstorm. And they're not equipped for the challenge. As you can see for your own eyes, only this night five tents have collapsed. Children are left under rain and snow without any shelter. This situation is the same across all the displacement camps in Aleppo's northern countryside and Idlib. Low temperatures, along with heavy rain, have taken a heavy toll on the people here. Most of the tents are not water resistant. There's a visible absence of essential sanitary facilities. Foul water ponds fill the streets and surround the tents. Thick mud restricts movement and makes it difficult to deliver clean drinking water to the camps. Children in particular are suffering the most. All the children in the camp are sick. If we want to take a child to a hospital, we have no alternative but to carry it through the mud and walk a long distance to the main road. Mud and water are everywhere. We are left without anything to keep us warm. Syria's humanitarian response coordinators are warning of a further deterioration of the situation in the camps. More snowfall is predicted in the coming days, and they're calling on international relief agencies for help. In addition to food and clothes, there's a desperate need for heating equipment, and there are warnings of possible deaths because of the severe cold. There are nearly two million displaced people in northern Syria living in camps along the Turkish border, and many of them need urgent help to get them through a tough winter. This is a catastrophe in a war-torn part of the world that has bitter experience of catastrophic events, and it keeps getting worse. The first earthquake, 7.8 magnitude. We are now hearing, Savannah, of another earthquake in the same area, 7.6 magnitude, and earth and aftershocks in cities in Iraq. And, Savannah, the numbers are stunning. Almost 3,000 buildings have collapsed. More than 1,300 people have been killed and that number inevitably will rise. Thousands have been injured and thousands, Savannah, are now on their way to try and take part in this desperate rescue operation. Whole buildings collapsing from the earthquake's power. Unable to stand against this quake, almost eight on the Richter scale. The morning light revealing devastation and wreckage. A toddler in Syria, bloody but conscious, pulled from the rubble. And other survivors taken from collapsed buildings, lucky to be alive. Three huge tremors, snapping streetlights and sending car alarms wailing. The moments recorded on security camera footage. This is one of the region's worst quakes in decades, striking while people slept just after 4 a.m. The quake hitting a huge area of southern Turkey and northern Syria, an area already war-torn with hundreds of refugees. The tremors felt as far as Beirut, Jerusalem and Gaza. In northern Syria, they are searching for survivors in opposition-held territory. Hospitals there already overwhelmed with the injured. We need help. We need the international community to do something to help us, to support us. Turkey's President Erdogan said rescue workers will be joined by troops to search for survivors, but they have a vast area to cover. Those searching, calling for silence as they try and listen for trapped survivors. This rescuer asking someone trapped, what colour are you wearing? Are you wearing pink? A frantic rush to find those caught in the rubble. The White House offering to provide any and all assistance to Turkey, although the statement left out any reference to the U.S. working directly with Syria. Kira, 7.8 magnitude quake. Can you just put that into perspective for us? Yeah. Well, Savannah, scientists say 7.8 is equivalent to 32 Hiroshima bombs. And remember, as I mentioned at the top there, we are now hearing of another earthquake of a similar magnitude. And, you know, Savannah, I have spent plenty of time in that region along the Turkish-Syria border. It is a place with many war refugees, many people living in destitution without electricity. This truly is a tragedy piled upon tragedy, Savannah. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open, the earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, 
and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. Let's get the latest on the smaller uh, but still significant earthquake that happened in Buffalo, New York this morning. Uh, surrounding areas woke up to a shake right there in western New York. And it's pretty incredible to hear some of the developments of people actually getting woken up out of bed from this just after 6 a.m. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, shocker, right? This is a 3.8 magnitude, according to the U.S. Geological Survey report, happened at 6.15 Eastern time on the northeastern edge of West Seneca. That's near the Lackawanna border. This earthquake could be felt as far north as Niagara Falls, right there along the Canadian border, and as far south as Orchard Park, New York. The Canadian government reports the seismic shift at 4.2 magnitude, so they were reporting uh, from a different portion of the tectonic plate, but, uh, you know, the shake intensity, just watching it there, you guys, uh, definitely enough to wake people up from their sleep. Luke 2111, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. There are five earthquakes that occur during the seven year tribulation, three of which are called great earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet Earth takes place during the last half of the seven year tribulation, as we read in Revelation 16, 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Fast spreading fires burn everything in their path. Forest, farms and homes. 2,300 firefighters have been deployed to control hundreds of wildfires. Nearly half of them are burning out of control. We are working on multiple sources of forest fires that added to the weather, high temperatures and a lot of wind have caused great destruction, both in vegetation and buildings. The fires began on Wednesday, destroying nearly 100,000 acres of land. Helicopters have been deployed, but too late to save some dozens of homes. More than 1,000 people are staying in shelters. I left my house with only the clothes I was wearing. There was no time to set up a fire break, nothing. I think everyone here went through the same situation. The wind speed changed very fast and everything suddenly started to burn. It was all very fast. Chile's government is now seeking international support. President Gabriel Boric cut short his summer vacation, his government extending a state of disaster. It allows the military to mobilize to help battle the fires as the number of dead continues to rise. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven year tribulation? A historic winter blast blanketing the Northeast today. It's really cold. <laughs> it's really, really cold. Wind chills in Portland reaching minus 45, and in Boston, 39 below. Uncharted territory for both cities. It's biting. I can't do anything. The once in a generation cold reaching the peak of nearby Mount Washington, where it felt like a jaw dropping minus 108. We've got frequent gusts in there 80 miles per hour. Meteorologist Francis Taranswitz measures conditions outside every hour. 
What was that like? You're immediately greeted by a roar, uh, sort of like a freight train. Before I really knew what was going on, uh, my legs seemed to have been knocked out from underneath me, and I was uh, on the ground. The record-shattering cold stirring up rare weather phenomena across the region, captured by NBC affiliate WPTZ's Liz Streppa. Here on the shores of Lake Champlain in beautiful Burlington, Vermont, the temperature plunged to 15 below zero, but it felt like 40 below with the wind chill. You can see the steam fog rising above the lake, and check this out. We've even seen some rare water spouts connecting up to the clouds. And in northern Maine, residents spotting trees cracking caused by moisture inside, freezing and quickly expanding. The Arctic blast turned deadly Friday when authorities say a tree fell on a car near Springfield, Massachusetts, killing an infant inside. Further south, whipping winds knocked the scaffolding off this building. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21. God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Now to the suspected Chinese spy balloon that raised tensions between the U.S. and China. An Air Force fighter jet shot down the balloon off the South Carolina coast on Saturday, and a recovery operation is underway. This morning, China said the U.S. hyped up the incident on purpose. The U.S. says the balloon flight was a clear violation of international law. The White House has been strenuously arguing all weekend that waiting to shoot this balloon down was the safest thing for people on the ground and enabled them to gather valuable intelligence. Overnight, though, the Chinese accused the U.S. of an indiscriminate use of force, even as some of the president's critics argue he wasn't forceful enough. The Chinese balloon may be down now, but the political fight over it rages on. I think this entire episode uh, telegraphed weakness to Xi and the Chinese government. In Washington Sunday, Republicans argued that the balloon, the size of three school buses, should have been taken out over the Pacific before it even entered U.S. airspace in Alaska. The president was paralyzed for an entire week by a balloon. The balloon's seven-day cross-country journey took it over Idaho, Montana, Missouri, and eventually to the South Carolina coast. They shot it! Where an F-22 fired a single air-to-air -air missile and sent the equipment hurtling into the Atlantic Ocean. I I told them to shoot it down. On oh, Wednesday. On Wednesday. But the recommendation They from said it. to me, let's wait till the safest place to do it. Senior administration officials argued that closely observing the balloon in flight before shooting it down allowed them to better understand the Chinese program and further confirmed its mission was surveillance. On Friday, yet another Chinese balloon was spotted over Latin America. All this comes just as the U.S. was trying to dial down tensions with China. Chinese are now claiming the U.S. overreacted, even as Secretary of State Antony Blinken called off a diplomatic trip to China at the last minute. It's not a coincidence that this happens leading up to the State of the Union address, leading up to Blinken's visit to China. Does any of this make sense to you? Because seriously, I have some questions here. Why would China sabotage its own diplomatic efforts in a major meeting between the United States, Tony Blinken and Xi, just days away with a balloon? China's been playing us for chumps for decades, folks. They've been flipping us the double-barreled middle finger for a long time now. They've been in our universities with these Confucius Institutes. They've been infiltrating our businesses. 
They've been stealing our IP, our intellectual property overseas. They've had spy operations. They've even, I don't know if you saw the story a few weeks back, they even set up their version of like their own local police force right here in the United States. Above this noodle shop in New York's Chinatown, agents of the Chinese communist government operated an overseas police station for years. There are more than 100 of them worldwide. They don't usually look like a police station. They may only be back rooms, but they're staffed by Chinese government officials. The police stations, along with so-called aid stations across the U.S., are used by the Chinese government to harass and threaten pro-democracy Chinese immigrants to stop speaking out against the regime and go back to China, even kidnapping them if necessary. One of their targets is Li Jianji, a pro-democracy activist who was tortured repeatedly in Chinese psychiatric hospitals before he was able to flee to the U.S. where the persecution has continued. Ji, who does not speak English, told us Chinese government hitmen in the Los Angeles area have tried to kill him three times, twice with a car and once by stabbing him in the neck calling him a traitor as they fled the scene. Chinese government agents and supporters regularly film and disrupt pro-democracy demonstrations in American cities. They warn activists they're being reported to Beijing and that their family back home will be arrested. The world has known about these police stations for many months now. A key question for the U.S. government is why almost nothing has been done about it. A recent New York Times report made it look like the FBI is on the case, highlighting a raid on that Chinese police station in New York's Chinatown. But that raid happened last fall, and the FBI didn't shut it down, it only gathered evidence. When we asked the FBI if it's closed any of the Chinese police stations across the U.S. or brought charges against anyone, it declined comment, saying that FBI Director Christopher Wray's testimony to the Senate Homeland Security Committee last year would serve as the agency's statement on the matter. We are aware of the existence of these stations. I had to be careful about discussing our specific investigative work, but suffice to say, I can tell you from an FBI director perspective, I'm deeply concerned concerned about this, uh, and I'm not going to just let it lie. Laura Harth, with the Spanish group that uncovered the extent of these overseas police stations, says it's been a struggle to get governments to do anything about it. I don't think most of them knew about the, the police stations, obviously. Um, that, that's clear from their response. Obviously, we had a response in the U.S., we had some response in Australia, uh, some in Canada, where the Royal Canadian Mounted Police um, head came out saying, oh yes, we know that this, this is an issue, we will act on it, yet nothing happened. Chinese democracy activist Jing Yu Wang is a U.S. resident now living under police protection in the Netherlands, where Chinese agents have repeatedly harassed and threatened him. He was in prison for two months in Dubai at the request of Chinese authorities and has had to fight off a knife attack in the Netherlands. How can I help you? Why you call me? This is a phone call he recorded from the Chinese embassy in Norway saying he's been reported to police as having a bomb. The Chinese government has imprisoned his parents to force him to return to China. They ask me go to Rotterdam, Chinese overseas police station for surrender. And they ask me go back to China. They ask me thinking about my parents from 2022 February to 2022, I think, uh, April. Almost every day they will make uh, over 100 phone calls to me. Every day, you know, like uh, the 3 a.m., 4 a.m., keep making phone call to me. These overseas police stations are only one part of a massive campaign to control Chinese citizens living in other nations. The communist government has also used what it calls Operation Fox Hunt and Skynet to apprehend citizens abroad under the guise of stopping financial crimes. So the police stations are really just the tip of the iceberg of what we're looking at when we talk about the transnational repression and policing campaigns coming from the Chinese Communist Party to return people to China at all costs, by all means. Harth says the Chinese government has reportedly forced the return of an incredible 230,000 Chinese back to the mainland between 2021 and last year. The CCP is attempting to impose its control in every country around the world. 
China expert Bradley Thayer believes one reason for the lack of action by the Justice Department has been a failure by American leaders to face up to the China threat. The lack of responsiveness regarding the China threat is something which has plagued us for decades. This uh, lack of concern uh, which plagues uh, the American elite, uh, and that would be universities, media, so many of our political leaders, Wall Street, Silicon Valley. The FBI recently asked the Chinese American community to report any harassment by Chinese government agents, which Thayer agreed was odd since the FBI, with its vast spying powers, probably knows who the agents are. Li Jianji wishes the FBI would do something. He told us he reported the attempts against his life to the FBI, but it never responded. China could be using cars and refrigerators to spy on people. A new report details how Chinese manufactured microchips and those items pose a threat to national security in the U.K. But there's also a potential for Chinese spying and security concerns right here in the U.S. The report warns that Beijing can use data collected and transmitted from those devices to track people. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. As I record this video, in a few weeks, I will be facing my first ever trial in my life in a criminal court case for sharing my Christian faith. Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Grek. I am 33 years old from Malta. I am a worship leader. Uh, I'm serving as a deacon in my church and I love music. So I write music, I sing, I play the piano, very musically involved. And uh, it's been a pleasure to also be associated with X Out Loud, which is a community of men and women who are leaving and have left LGBT. I was approached by a local conservative media platform called PM News Malta, and I was asked to share my ex-gay testimony and to share my perspective on human sexuality um, because these journalists wanted to understand the subject a little bit more and they wanted to hear the other side of the story and to give that a platform and a voice in the context of a country that has banned so-called conversion therapy. I accepted the offer. I was there, I was sharing my story, sharing the hope that I have in Jesus Christ, my biblical faith, and I answered questions about counseling and, and, and why that is relevant and whether people can change. So it was a very civilized, um, intellectual, scientific and spiritual discussion. Eventually I had to go to the police station where uh, I found out that three different people reported me to the police and were making allegations that not just myself, but also the journalists themselves, us three, that we were advertising conversion practices by simply um, relating my story and talking about ex-LGBT and counseling and help and support for such individuals there we were we were told it could be that the police inspector would want to interview us as well but that never happened in in the matter of a few days or a few weeks um, the police decided to press charges against us and we find ourselves now uh, facing a criminal court case that can make us liable to a fine of 5,000 up to 5,000 euros or even imprisonment for five months. For us, this situation is very concerning here in Malta. Um, we feel that we don't know what we can say anymore, what we can't say. Um, we definitely feel like this is a serious infringement upon our freedom to express our faith, the freedom to, to think differently, the freedom to live out our faith authentically and to celebrate it and to express it in the public sphere. This is seriously concerning, uh, not just for ourselves, 
for our families, but also for all churches in Malta and in Europe. We feel that this has international relevance because there are many other countries that want to follow suit and have no idea about the attack that this is launching against churches all across the world. It is everyone's job listening to this video to raise awareness on the dangers of introducing such a ban because LGBT activists will use this ban to target churches, to target Christians and believers in all communities. We need to fight against the introduction of such legislation all across the world because it's a serious assault against churches. Um, it's, a, it's an assault against the Word of God and the work of God. And we must take a stand and take this very seriously. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, 
and God raised him from the dead. See, call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.